In today's video, we are going to talk about liver enzymes and inflammatory marker labs. Hey guys, I'm Dee and welcome back to my channel. I do weekly videos on Thursdays about rheumatology, health or nursing type topics as I am a nurse myself and also a rheumatology patient. So if that sounds interesting to you, be sure to hit the subscribe button and make sure you hit the little bell so you don't miss any of my videos. So without further ado, let's get on to the video. So in a previous video that I made, I had mentioned that there are what we call safety labs that are done a lot of times in rheumatology to see how the disease is going, see how your body is doing. It's just another clue that helps figure out how your disease process is doing. So they're labs that you get every, depending on the person, every three to six months going over systematic body function, so to speak. So two of the very important ones that are looked at are inflammatory markers and liver enzymes. So we'll start out with the liver. The liver is what helps process the medications that you take. Any sort of medication, any sort of supplement, multivitamin, any of those type things, any drugs, they all are processed through the liver. So if your liver gets overwhelmed because you're taking strong medications, which is pretty common with a lot of autoimmune conditions because you have to calm that immune system down because it's way overactive and you got to kind of calm it down several notches so it stops attacking your tissues. Those are very heavy medications. So sometimes the liver will get overwhelmed and it'll be like, hey, I, I need a little break. Can, can, can you hold off a little bit? Okay, the assembly line's going a little too fast right now. So if they end up coming back elevated, then the provider generally ends up adjusting the medications, whether it is bringing down the dose because you're sensitive to that medication, whether it is taking a break from that medication and stopping it for a short period of time, or whether it is this medication is too heavy altogether, we need to do a different one. Okay, that is one of the reasons why if you've ever heard people say, be careful how much acetaminophen or Tylenol you take, it's because that medication is, can be heavy on the liver if you take too much of it. It, it, it works kind of like that. So if you do not get these safety labs, it becomes unsafe for the provider to prescribe those medications because if your liver enzymes are high and the provider doesn't know because the labs weren't done and you continue these heavy medications and it overwhelms your liver and you get very sick that's not safe and that causes way more problems so it is very important that you get those safety labs done even if you have an issue and something comes up and you can't make it to that particular appointment on that time and you got to reschedule and you know sometimes them appointments can be way far out always make sure those labs are done so that way you don't have issues getting a refill on those medications when you need it and it's nice to know that your liver's doing good at least i like to know that my liver's doing good these are the norms for the different liver enzymes the names are very long, so that's why I am using the abbreviations, okay? If you would like to look up what that long name is, just do a Google search, like what does AST stand for, and you'll see why I just use the letters for short, okay? But they're all various liver enzymes that are checked. So. If your liver enzymes are doing good, that's great. If they're mildly elevated, like they're close to that high end of normal, there may be some adjustments. It's hard to say. This would be one of those things where you would talk to your provider about, as you should with all lab work, because everyone's situation is different and everyone has a different baseline. You know what I'm saying? Some people, 
their baseline is for their lab work to be on the higher end of normal. Sometimes it's lower. So always talk to your provider if you have any questions about any lab work because they know your body and your norms better than I do being just some random nurse here on YouTube. The next one we're gonna talk about is the inflammatory markers. This is also used to, as a clue for a diagnosis. Afterwards, they are also used as safety labs because it helps paint a picture of disease activity in many people. So when you have an autoimmune condition, regardless whether you see a rheumatologist, whether you see an endocrinologist, you know, for the type one diabetes or whoever, it's inflammatory in nature. Autoimmune disorders are inflammatory, which means they cause inflammation and irritation wherever that immune system is mistakenly attacking something. So concurrently, a lot of times the inflammatory markers will be elevated when it's active. This is not the case with everybody, which I'm gonna to get to a little bit later in the video, but for a majority of people, if there's active inflammation going on, they're gonna have elevated inflammatory markers. So the first one I'm gonna talk about is ESR, is the short name, but you might've also heard of it as sedimentation rate or the sed rate. And essentially it is a general inflammatory marker. This one does not point out it's inflammation going on in the skin or it's inflammation going on in the kidneys. It doesn't point to a specific body part, but what it does show is that in general, there is more inflammation going on than it should be right now. And we need to take a look at that. So what a lot of providers like to do is look and see, is it normal? And if it's not normal, is it getting better? If it's getting higher and it's getting worse, okay, we need to figure out what we need to tweak in this treatment plan so that way you're feeling better, even if you're not feeling any symptoms. And again, there are many different reasons why the sedimentation rate could be elevated so it's not something specific. They have to combine it with a lot of stuff, like your symptoms and scans and everything else. Okay, the other one that is checked is CRP, also known as C-reactive protein. That one can also be elevated for a bunch of reasons. It is general as well, like sometimes it'll be elevated due to infection, but it also can be elevated in, with inflammation as well. So just like with the SED rate, the provider is going to look at everything else going on with you to try and figure out, okay, do we need to tweak this plan? What's going on here? Are we doing better? Are we doing worse? Are we about the same? So these inflammatory markers, just like liver enzymes are very important. And anytime I get blood work, I look and see what those numbers are. And when I see that they're normal or that they're getting better, that makes me feel better. Like, okay, at least something's going right. Cause y'all know if y'all got any sort of chronic illness, y'all know sometimes it feels like ain't nothing going right. <laughs> Some days it feels like that. So I, that's one of the ways that I keep myself like, yes, there's something positive, you know? So that's it for this video. I hope you guys found this information helpful. Again, if you think this is helpful for someone else, be sure to share this video, you know, we'll let people know. And as always, I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.